Hey guys, so today we get to have the full Armaquette card spoiled and it is a little bit underwhelming. I wasn't expecting to see something particularly powerful today given the fact it is the Friday but I feel like they could have made the set a little bit more powerful. Yes, you have the five gods which are pretty cool and yes, you have your Liliana, your Gideon, and your Nisser, like every other set does. But overall, I feel like that the cards are not really pushed uh, in terms of power, uh, in terms of modern playability. I don't see any of these resulting in a new modern deck of any type or supplementing any of the current modern decks. I'm a little skeptical about why they are doing this and why the power level is so low in this set. Mainly because we went from a set where we had Smuggler's Copters, we had Amical. I remember a lot of these cards were recently banned because Smuggler Copter was too good. And now we are in a set which looks relatively weak. Maybe mechanically it's different, but I haven't really seen a Embalm card that I would say is over the top. The masterpieces are, you know, design aside, are not the most expensive card choices. It's no no longer a mana vault. It's no longer the fetch lands. It's just kind of blah. So looking at some of these commons and uncommons, it should be a relatively fun limited set. Everything being the same power level is very good for the set in a limited sense. I'm just a little concerned that the... So whenever we power down the cards, like... Acadian Mask, we power down after Urza Saga. I, what was it, Champions of Kamigawa was after the Affinity builds. Whenever we get into this um, scenario, like our, after RTR was a very low power set, Pharos and Journey into Nyx, Born of the Gods, which you can still get boxes for like under $70 a piece on these. I kind of wonder what's going on you know why? Why uh, you you can only you can push a few different ones. I think if you had Dark Confidant in this set, it would have been really good as a reprint. I feel like there's no particular chase card which you open and you feel really good about. Yes, there's some cards that are pre-ordering for quite a bit of money, and yes, the we have a Force of Will Invocation, whose price point is extremely high at this point. Uh, I don't know where it's going to end up. My gut feeling is this was such a cool theme, a cool set, that they could have pushed the power level a lot more than they did. And then especially with the mechanics. Uh, typically when you have a new mechanic like Embalm or a... It just reminds me of Flashback, right? Flashback is not a new mechanic, it is a very old mechanic, and they just did Embalm is flashback for creatures, and the other one is flashback where the card doesn't do the same thing, it does something a little different. So I'm a little bit worried about where the game is heading in terms of creativity and in terms of design. They're kind of running out of design space when the first card was the first flip card or aftermath card. People didn't believe that was actually a real card, given what it looked like. Uh, it looks kind of strange, but it is a real card, and there's not just one of them. There's a whole bunch of them. So I am excited for the set. I will see how it turns out. I just wanted to make this video to say, hey, don't really buy into the hype of, of the single cards. And the set overall looks like something I would not, if I had to pick a set, this would not be the set I would invest in at all. And if you're going to buy cases, this would not be a set I would buy cases in. If you're going to draft and open boxes, this is a perfectly fine set for limited and draft and sealed. But long term wise, I just, I honestly don't see the long term financial effects of these cards. And yes, you have some really cool splashy cards, but can they hold their weight in the internal formats, which has itself taken a beating due to all the reprints? And I think the answer is no. And I'm overall a little over underwhelmed, I guess, 
about the actual cards, the set, how they used. I was expecting to see. I don't know what I was expecting to see. Honestly, I was more expecting to see something along the lines of a goosebump book or something like a kind of a horror theme, mummy theme type of thing, or at least、uh, Nicol Bolas more. And we just got a set where, yes, they did a very good job with the flavor, but I, I honestly cannot see any of these cards seeing tremendous modern play, and that's very sad for a set because normally a set you will have one or two cards that when they they first release, you look at it and say, "Wow, that's going to be a game changer," and it doesn't have to be rare or mythic. It could be something like Fatal Push. You look at Fatal Push and how many how. Much has really changed the game. It's pretty good for uncommon. It's four or five dollar uncommon still, which is crazy. I'm the cycling lands are kind of nice. I do want to mention that's unique. The dual cycling lands are a strict upgrade over the previous cycling lands. But when when are they going to see play? When is it optimal to spend turn three or turn two cycling a land? Is that really what people want to do on turn two, where you have Tamagoyf, you have, I mean, you just have Tamagoyf.、So、you can have、um, a Drazi by turn two is not cycling land. They're playing out huge damage dealers, and even the combo decks are getting ready to combo off by turn four or five. So overall, a set that flavor wise very high potential. The power level very very low potential, and the sealed looks good. The standard environment I don't see. I mean, thank God they banned Smuggler's Copter, right? Because Smuggler's Copter would still be very good even with all the artifact hate. So overall, it is something that I look at and I say to myself, it's a unique set. The artwork is great, but I would not advise buying cases of this. And I feel. Like this is a set that will sit on the shelf if RTR and Gatecrass are still on the, you know, my local game store has those ton boxes of them still available, as well as original Conspiracy and Conspiracy Two. If they can't sell, I don't see this selling out. So what it's going to do is it's going to be kind of a Dragon Mazey set where even if you said, hey, sixty dollars a box. If someone offered me sixty dollars a box for Dragon's Maze, I would still not take it. I'd be like, "Nah, there's no value in it," especially given the fact that they got rid of the fuse mechanic in any viable, playable way. I'm overall underwhelmed by the set. I feel.、Uh, let me know what you guys believe in the comments below. Maybe I'm reading the cards incorrectly. I I went over the entire set. Obviously, pre-order prices are the same. They're always going to be hyped. They're always going to be very valuable. I think this set in general is a weak set. Especially when you compare it to the Kaladesh,、uh, Kaladesh, or even it's been a while since we've had something really pushed. I think RTR was the last time when you had Deathrai Shaman, you had Abrupt Decay, you had Revelations, Rest in Peace, and the Five Shock Lands in that set. Gatecrash was also semi good, but really right now it's just the Five Shock Lands. It's hard to add strong cards into modern. Because modern is a lot of sets, so when you're adding strong cards, it's one or two chase cards. Here, you know, my main concern right now for Magic as a whole, just to be frank with you, and I will make a video. I'm spending a lot of money on、uh, my dog, which is another. That's probably why I can't go to Las Vegas. Is I've just spent in the four figures、uh, for her health. And I will, you know, get into that maybe a little later. It's a very sad situation. And then also Fire Emblem Mobile, and I just don't see myself wanting to spend money on this set. They had to do. It would be really easy for me to say, "Hey, this is an Egyptian set. I love Egypt. Who doesn't love the Egypt? Who didn't grow up as a kid reading those Goosebump books or watching the Mummy, the Mummy Returns? You know, I even bought the books." Not even the real, like the books, just the books based on the movies, which is like terrible, right? And I wanted to go back and just enjoy that, but this is not it.、Uh, I can tell you, this is not it for me.
I personally feel like I'm not too excited about this set. And overall, I'm not going to spend that much money on it. I'm not even going to. It, it doesn't want me. It doesn't make me want to play standard more. Right, in standard, I want to play cool cards with cool effects. I want to have like a triangle scenario where this deck beats that deck and then my deck beats your deck. It, it's uh, very strange to see what happened with this set. Uh, it released, it looked good when it started going, and then the whole set released. I lo I'm looking at these cards, and I've looked at the entire set for many, many sets ever since, like, RTR. And I have a very good gut feeling. When I saw Journey of Nyx, I was like, oh, wow, this set's crappy. And when people were saying it was good, when I saw the recent sets, it, it's very surprising to... The strongest recent set has to be Oath of the Gatewatch. That set, compared to this set, is way stronger, and it developed an entire modern deck. It's not the top modern deck, but it's a good modern deck. It developed an entire legacy deck, and developed an entire vintage deck. So that's what I would I would want to see, is, hey, let's push some of the cards. Let's get just this deck, but the deck can survive after rotation. I don't think any of these cards survive after rotation, to be quite honest with you. I mean, maybe they're EDH playables, but I don't think they have that much eternal playability in the modern and legacy or vintage format. They just seem to be met cards to me, where they could have took advantage of the fact that we went to Egypt, delivered an outstanding set, and instead we get kind of this met. Uh, and I'm... You know, I'm not adverse to spending money on good products. Like, obviously, that's something I want to do, and that's something I will do. Depending on, but it depends on the product. I don't feel Amaket power wise is a product I would spend money on. And I don't feel like it's going to get me back into standard. I don't currently have a standard deck. I can make one, I guess, but it wouldn't have any of the. Kaladesh cards or Aether Revolt. I wouldn't, well, Kaladesh would have all of those, but I wouldn't have any Aether Revolt cards, and I wouldn't want to buy Amrit Ket cards because they seem. Card value, card playability is really important, but you do want your player base to feel like, hey, my cards have some value after rotation. This is not it. I can tell you that much. I've seen enough sets to realize that this is Journey into Nyx. This is born of the gods. And there's no other way to say it except, man, I, I really wanted to love this set. But after seeing it all released, I can't. Anyway, let me know what you guys feel about the set in the comments below. Uh, leave me a comment below. Anyway, bye guys.